Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and here I'm unboxing and setting up the RMX Shift Series Modular Power Supply Unit from Corsair, showing you what to do, where to plug cables in, what's included in the box, and how to set it up. I'm also going to be showing off the modular premium power supply cables from Corsair, because they're pretty snazzy and well worth considering as well. But I'm going to start with the standard installation, which talk through all the different steps and things to bear in mind while installing the cables and the thought process behind it. It's worth noting that the RM Shift, if you're not aware already, is a slightly different variant to Corsair's usual power supply lineup in that the connectors are actually on the side, which means they face towards the rear of the case rather than out the back, which will make sense when you see it at the end. But essentially, these will run along the back panel of the case where all the motherboard base and other things sit and all the cable channeling, which in theory makes it easier to manipulate the cables and set them up in a nice way. Now, this is a PCIe Gen 5 compatible power supply unit, which means that it comes with a lot of cables. These are Type 5 cables as well, so they're actually smaller than the standard cables you might well be used to. The connector that connects up to the power supply unit is actually tinier, and that's pretty interesting. But you'll see there is modular, so you do have connectors in a variety of different ways, and they're all nicely labeled so you know where to plug things in. But I'm gonna show you where to connect up every little thing you will need for your PC build. I'm gonna start things off with the motherboard. Now I'm gonna show you these things outside the case so it's easier to see where things are plugged in and you get a clearer picture of what to do. Obviously you'd actually do this when it's all installed in the case, which I'll show you at the end. I'm gonna start with the 24 pin power supply unit for the motherboard. This plugs in the right hand side of the motherboard. You can see it's clearly marked on the PSU as well. It says motherboard there. There are actually three connectors in that surrounding area. The cable itself only has two. You'll see it's split into two parts on the power supply end. Now you can't actually get this cable the wrong way around because the end that connects to the motherboard itself is actually fatter. So the connectors that connect up there are larger style. The type five connectors that connect to the PSU are of a smaller size, smaller form factor. So you'll see that they just push in to the relevant parts here and you can just copy what I'm doing. The little one goes just below that longer one there and plugs in. Obviously you have to make sure these are properly seated. You'll notice there's a little clip on the top of each of them that pushes into a relevant hole on the PSU and that ensures that it's fully secured. And then the other end plugs into the motherboard on the right hand side here. It's really important this cable is fully connected. If it isn't seated properly, your motherboard and your computer will not turn on. It will not power on. That's one of the most important cables to install. Obviously, you have to make sure you install them all correctly and seat them correctly. But this one is essential. And next up is the CPU power cables. You can see them clearly marked CPU. Again, you'll see there's a difference between the end that connects to the motherboard and the end that connects to the power supply unit is significantly smaller on the PSU, so you can't get these wrong. Here we're looking for the PCIe slash CPU markings, and we want to plug the Type 5 end into there. Now, you'll generally find that you have one or two CPU power connectors for your motherboard, and they're often in the top left position. Sometimes you might find three on the more extreme end motherboards, but generally speaking, it's just two. And so you run these cables up to the top. Again, I'm demonstrating this outside the case. You would not do this once you first unbox the power supply unit. You want to make sure you build it in the case this way. And I'll show you that later. But I just want to make it easier to see. And once again, you can only plug these in one way because they have a clip on top which basically hooks over the socket on the motherboard. And once you push that down, you should feel a nice little click in there, and then it'll seat down in place. The thing you'll notice about these cables is also really flat. They're long and they're flat, which means that they should squash nicely up against the back of your case and should be easy to cable manage as well. So you've got a nice, neat setup in the case too. Next up is the SATA connectors. There are loads of these included in the box. You'll see those are daisy chainable cables, basically have multiple connections on them. You've got the Type 5 connector that connects up to the SATA slash PATA connectors up here in the top row and a tiny little six pin connector that plugs in there. And then this gives you multiple connections for various different devices. So, for example, you can use it with a Corsair Commander Pro or a Commander Core and that requires SATA power. This is for fan control. It does fan and RGB control on the various different Corsair fans and the connector plugs in there. Now, this has an L shaped connector to it very small L shape to it. So it only connects up one way, but I always get it the wrong way around. So don't worry if you do. 
you will not be able to plug it in incorrectly. Now this cable is also daisy chainable, so there's multiple connectors on it, so you can theoretically use it with other things too, which means that you connect up hard disk drives, SSDs, RGB controllers, fan controllers, all sorts of things require SATA power. These connect up to this really easily. You can just push them in and connect that up. And you can, in theory, run multiple devices off of one cable with relative ease as well. So you can see in the example here, just those two things, but we could add in more. You can see there's still spare connectors on that cable. So it's important to work out how many cables you're gonna be using. For example, I have this NZXT USB hub, which allows you to connect up four different USB connectors to one single USB on your motherboard. That also has a SATA power connector. And again, we can connect that up to the same cable. So now we could have three cables on there. Alternatively, if you wanted to, if you want it to be a bit more secure and think about sort of the power usage from each of these cables, you could use another one because there are loads of these cables included in the box, as you've seen. So you've got plenty of different SATA connectors that you can use with relative ease. The next one is probably not going to be used in most builds. And this connector is essentially used for older things, DVD drives, SSDs, but also pump reservoir combos from full custom liquid loop systems. So that is also powered by the PATA slash SATA section. So you, it's a peripheral connector essentially. And again, this is daisy chain, so you can see that this has multiple connections on it. There's two of those cables included in the box, so if you do need them, you do have the option to add in multiple different ones and use those relatively easily too. So a nice lot of connectors and again, nice flat connection as well. You can see here from a Corsair 5000T that I did a while ago with that combo reservoir here that that has the power connector on the bottom. Next is the graphics card connectors, PCIe connectors. And I'm going to show you both Nvidia's 30 series and 40 series GPUs and the different logic for that. So this is a standard sort of original setup that you probably be used to. This is a type five connection on one end and on the other end, it has a sort of pigtail setup. So you've got two PCIe eight pin connectors on there, split in to two there. And there's different cables included in the box. This is worth watching out for, because you'll see that there's two of those pigtail ones with the split, but then you've got three single ones. So this is basically one cable plugs into the power supply unit and then one connector, which is eight pin up to the graphics card. So if you've got a GPU like I have, and this is a Gigabyte 3090 OC Vision card, you'll see it has two power connectors on it. So it requires two eight pin power connectors. You may well have a card that has three, perhaps, and then you can use those three separate cables. So the best course of action is to use these individual ones. You have to push the two pins together and then you've got it into an eight pin connector and then plug that in. But this is that individual one rather than the other one that has that sort of pigtail, which is theoretically possible to daisy chain connectors up with. But really, if you wanna make sure you've got the best possible power, you use these single connectors and you'll see you just push those in, make sure you slot it all in so that both parts of that are seated properly. Cause if you've got one that's loose, then it won't power on. And then you've just got two connectors that connect up to the power supply unit. So this is obviously for 30 series cards. That's the logic you'd use for NVIDIA's 30 series cards and for AMD GPUs as well and Intel. And you basically connect up the other end to the PCIe slash CPU connectors here that you'll see. Now, obviously that logic's fairly straightforward. If you've got three or four connectors on your GPU, it might be a bit more complicated, but obviously as you've seen, this PSU comes with three of these style of cables. So you've got plenty of cables there that you can use and then you just maybe have to go for the daisy chain one if you've got more, but you should find that you can basically have this set up fairly straightforward, straight connectors, nice and neat as well on the end that plugs into the graphics card, which is pretty cool. Now we go on to the 40 series card. So this is a Gigabyte 4070 Ti, which comes in the box as standard with this NVIDIA adapter, which is a special connector that has one cable that connects up to the power supply unit. It's a different you can see close up here that it has some extra pins on the top it's a bit more fiddly you need to make sure it's seated properly and pushed in the thing about this connector is it's also messy but it basically what it does is it allows you to push this in and then connect it up to two eight pin power supply cables now traditionally what you would have done with an older generation of psu is you'd plug this end into here and then you have those standard cables that i showed you a minute ago that you connected up directly to the 3090 they would connect up instead to this adapter. So again, you'd use those straight single cables, push the pins together and put it all in. You can see this ends up then looking a bit messy. You could do this logic if you want to, but you actually have a cable included in the box, 
which makes things a lot easier. So you can get rid of this mess, unclip it, and instead we're just going to use this dedicated cable, which essentially is a similar logic, but it cuts out that middleman of the adapter because it basically just plugs straight into the GPU and then the other end, those two connectors plug into the PSU and that'll be enough to power the 40 series graphics cards and makes things nice and neat. You can also see it's really flexible. It's a nice flexible cable so it should be easy to manipulate around and it's long as well so you shouldn't have any issues with it. Be very careful with this cable, make sure it's plugged in fully at both ends, both to the graphics card and to the power supply unit because there were problems with some of the cards melting initially with the 40 series and the top end, the flagship 4090, because people weren't plugging it in properly. Then you obviously need to plug in all your cables and put it in the case. But now another step I'm going to show you, which isn't essential, but is a nice upgrade if you want to do it. This is Corsair's Pro Kit, which is essentially a premium single sleeved, individually sleeved power supply cables. They are Type 5 cables still, so they have the same logic with the small connectors on one end and then the traditional ones on the other. And they are really nice looking. And they're a nicer setup with some cable combs, so you can make them look theoretically nicer. Here you can see I've sorted out the box. I'll leave links in the description so you can find out the official thing. But there are loads of cables included in the box, but once I've whittled them down, these are the ones that I need. So you've got that standard connector for the graphics card that I showed you a minute ago. Then you've got obviously the motherboard and CPU connectors, single SATA connector. And that's one thing to note is that it lacks as many SATA connectors as the standard one, but that doesn't matter because you can still use the ones that come included with the power supply at the back if you want to. But here you can see you've got a nice, neat setup. Plug all those cables in so it's ready to go and then put it into your case. I'm using the Corsair 5000D for demonstration purposes here, but you can see what I was talking about earlier. So instead of the cables coming out the front towards the front of the case, towards the hard disk drives, they now come out a rear panel here, and then you can then run them into the case. And I'll show you that in a second. You have four screws included with the power supply that screw into the relevant holes when you line it up at the back of the case. You will have noticed that I also made sure that the case was fanned down towards the bottom. That's because that's an intake fan, pulls air up from the bottom of the case and then blows it out the rear where the power button is to turn it on. So the next stage in this case, in this build, and by the way, if you want to see this full build, subscribe for more because I'm going to be doing it a guide on it soon, is that we have the ability to then run those cables through the channeling and obviously use the cable ties and Velcro ties to neaten things up and run them so they're in the right place. So I've obviously installed the power supply unit now. I'm seating everything down, connecting up all those SATA connectors. You can see I've got multiple different devices. I've got the RGB hubs, I've got the USB hub, I've got the commander hub. All those things need extra power connectors up. And then I'm running the cables through to the front. So again, this is what you would do when you've finished is the two 8-pin CPU power connectors plug in the top left, don't forget that, and then also the 24-pin power supply cable plugs into the motherboard on the right as well, and you need to make sure those, as a minimum, are connected up, otherwise the power won't turn on. Now this is a little tricky to manipulate in this case because of the cable channeling, but you can see the individual sleeving on this means that you could potentially make it a little bit neater. You'll see the finished product in a minute. You've got that cable comb to tidy things up. And then I'm running the 4070 Ti and connecting that up as well. Obviously set up in this way and then run the cable from the bottom. I found that if you run the cable through to the bottom, it looks a little bit neater if you can do that in your case. Obviously it's going to vary from case to case, but this means that it's not putting any tension on that cable. It's a nice long cable anyway, so it's really easy to set up and connect up. Now obviously this PSU has managed to run with a number of different things. You can see that I've got seven RGB fans, You've got the RGB and screen hub on the pump. And then we've got the lovely setup with the lighting triangles as well. So plenty of things there and obviously the high end GPU. So plenty of different things going on here and it all ran from that power supply unit. And then we have this final product. So as I said, subscribe if you want to see this build and find out more about it and what's going on there. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks very much for watching.